In a country like the Philippines where earthquakes happen frequently, building a safe home is not a luxury. It's a necessity. In fact, it has one of the top priorities that we should consider when constructing our very own house and lot. Whether you're rebuilding a new house or you already have one and you're re-wondering how safe it is, today's episode is for you. We'll walk you through the earthquake-resistant features that you need to look out for. Welcome to this channel, your most trusted real estate advisor. Today, we'll tackle the topic that every one, especially homeowners and soon-to-be homeowners, should know about. We'll discuss the things that you should not do when constructing a house. And I guess you can also apply this to your existing house to make sure that it is earthquake-resistant. After all, we are living in a country that is situated in the Pacific. Ring of Fire. So this is a topic that is really close to our hearts. Before we begin, please don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe so that you can get notified whenever we upload a new video. You may also want to check out our other videos. And without further ado, let's get started. No. 1. Foundation Matters Most small homes in the Philippines are built on shallow foundations or even directly on fill. That's dangerous. Always ensure you're building on solid, compacted, good quality soil. Fill soil can be anything from loose sand to clay or rock that has been brought in and dumped on the building site. But if you're lucky enough to have soil that is suitable for shallow foundations, then it's best to do a soil test to determine what kind of soil you have. To find out more about soil types and foundations, you may refer to a previous episode. For seismic safety, reinforced isolated footings or mat foundations are better than simple pad foot. When designing for earthquakes, buildings are given a base or a foundation that allows them to move but not get displaced during an earthquake. The foundation serves as the link between the structure and the earth. This is why it is important that the foundation is designed well. Number 2. Column and Beam Reinforcement These are the bones of your house. Never skimp on rebar size or spacing. It is very common for homeowners to opt for cheaper materials or request the contractor to decrease the amount of steel bars or rebar in the structure. Since they cannot see the steel bars anyway after construction, doing so is very dangerous. During earthquakes, vertical columns should have proper ties to prevent buckling. Buckling is a sudden sideways failure of a structural member due to compressive stress. Meanwhile, beams need continuous steel from end to end. A complete structural frame acts like a skeleton during a quake. It moves but doesn't collapse. When it comes to beams, it's important to note that there are different types of beams. We have the simply supported beam, which means that the beam is supported on both ends. Then we have the cantilever beam that is supported on one end and the other end is free to rotate. Next is the fixed beam that is attached to a rigid support that resists both rotation and vertical movement. And finally, the continuous beam which is supported more than two supports. Each type of beam has its own formula in computing, the amount of steel bars needed, and as much as possible, it would be best to avoid using wood as a substitute for steel bars, because steel provides superior strength and ductility compared to wood. Moving on to columns, we have the short column and the long column. Short columns are stubby columns, with short height to effective length ratio. They fail by crushing or yielding. On the other hand, long columns have slenderness ratios greater than 120, and they tend to buckle rather than yield. Long columns can be made shorter by tying them to a beam through short column splices. Also, it's always best to use steel columns instead of concrete-filled steel columns. Why? Concrete-filled steel columns are very susceptible to buckling. And speaking of steel, it's important to know the different kinds of steel bars that are used in construction. There's the deformed bar, which is the most commonly used bar in reinforced concrete structures. The ribs or deformations in the bar enhance the bond with concrete. Next is the plain round bar, which is smooth and commonly used in non-structural applications such as for reinforcement to concrete pipes. Next is the pre-stressed bar, which is commonly used in pre-stressed concrete. This type of bar is tensioned before the concrete is placed around it. And finally, we have the welded wire mesh, which is made by weaving together high tensile steel wires and is used in concrete to control cracking and as formwork. Of course, there are more types of steel bars, but these are the ones that you are most likely to encounter in your construction project. Next, let's talk about the different types of concrete that are being used in construction. The first one is normal weight concrete, which is the most common type of concrete that is made with aggregates with unit weight between 23 to 26 kilonewtons per cubic meter. Next, we have lightweight aggregate concrete that uses lightweight aggregates such as expanded clay or shale, pumice, slag, or volcanic tuff, and it has a unit weight ranging from 16 to 20 kilonewtons per cubic meter. The next type of concrete is high-strength concrete that has a compressive strength greater than 50 m. The mixed design of high-strength concrete is complex and requires precise proportions of ingredients. 
Lastly, we have the fluid or self-compacting concrete that is designed to flow easily into formwork without segregation. This type of concrete is used in congested reinforcement or when placing concrete in cold weather. We know that you guys are very interested in this topic, so we vet prepared an entire course about it. It covers topics such as the structural system of a house, introduction to structural analysis, basic structural design concepts and principles, basics of earthquake-resistant design, and more. Plus, the usual engineering computations are also included. We have worked hard to make sure that this course is easy to understand and follow. It contains a lot of illustrations, photos, and videos to make learning more fun and interactive. If you want to learn more about this topic, click the link in the description box below. No. 3. Wall configuration. Avoid long walls without support. Large open spaces like oversized windows or wide front openings without adequate support can become weak spots. Use reinforced concrete hollow blocks and avoid removing load-bearing walls. Walls carry the loads from floors, roofs, and any objects placed on them down to the foundations. By rearranging the walls in your house, you can achieve more livable space without compromising the structural integrity of your home. Removing walls, however, should be done strategically and with the consultation of a structural engineer. In case you want to remove a wall, you might want to consider these questions. Is the wall a load-bearing wall? Will the removal of this wall affect the stability of the structure? What alternative solutions can be used to strengthen the remaining structure? Can you add a column to replace the removed wall? And lastly, what are the permit requirements to demolish a wall? Now, we know that there are some cases where homeowners decide to remove some walls just to save cost. However, it's better to spend a little more and keep the walls intact. Number 4. Roof Attachment Lightweight roofing is better during an earthquake, but it must be properly anchored to the walls. Use steel straps or anchor bolts to connect the trusses to your concrete beam. Loose roof systems can detach and collapse in strong shaking. Roofs can collapse independently from the rest of the structure. If they aren't properly secured to the walls, during earthquakes, roofs can sway violently and independent roofs are more likely to collapse. The roof system should be adequately secured to the rest of the structure to ensure that it resists lateral loads. This can be achieved by using straps, braces, or other suitable devices. 5. Don't skip the connections. In many local builds, slab tua or wall two beam connections are weak. Make sure your construction ties all elements together columns, beams, walls, roof, and even the foundation. Think of your house as one moving unit. Structural damage often occurs at the joints or connection details of a structure. Proper attention to these details can greatly increase the earthquake resistance of a building. For instance, if the walls are not properly connected to the floor or roof system, they may collapse or shift out of place during an earthquake. The same is true if the beams, columns, and other structural members are not properly connected. Now that you know the five things that you should not do when building a house, what are the things that you should do instead? Well, here are some bonus tips for you. Add horizontal ties at mid-height of your walls. Play seismic joints if your house is long or has multiple wings. And avoid cantilevered balconies or heavy second-floor walls unsupported by columns below. These tips are not just for engineers. As a homeowner, you have the right to ask for safety and the responsibility to demand it. If you're unsure, consult a licensed engineer or get your house assessed. Because when the ground shakes, the only thing that should break is your plate knot in your home. And if you think we missed something in this list, feel free to leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. We hope that you learned something new. If you did, please do and forget to hit the like button and subscribe so that you won't miss any future uploads. You may also want to check out our other videos. Once again, this has been your host. We'll see you next time.